I'm going to take a look at YouTube's own keyword research tool in YouTube Studio, the features and the advantages of using other keyword research tools. You can find the keyword research tool in YouTube Studio, go in the menu here to analytics, then on the top of the screen, choose the tab research. And now we are in the keyword research tool. There are three tabs over here, the searches across YouTube, your viewers searches and saved. I will go over all these three step by step. You can enter a search term in the search bar over here, for example, dog, and you can see it autocompletes dog to different topics. For example, the animal or Dogecoin, because the first part of Dogecoin is dog, the Chinese zodiac sign, doghouse, etc., etc., etc. Let's select dog, the animal, and now it gives us all the search terms with dog. Dog, dog barking, dog sound, funny animal videos, pitbull, dog videos, etc. The advantage of YouTube's own keyword research tool is, is that it is based on real data in contrast to all the other third-party YouTube keyword research tools that just guess things. And the problem with guessing is, is that it is always wrong. All third-party keyword research tools lack any sense of relevancy. But here, it knows that dog is an animal, so it suggests funny animal videos. It knows that Pitbull is a dog breed. Although this autocomplete is pretty sophisticated, it is also a little bit clunky and weird and sometimes not even really helpful. For example, when I type in how to feed, then it autocompletes with how to feed you too. And personally, I don't think that Bono will like that. But regretfully, it doesn't work as good for every search term. For example, when I type in how to make a cabin in the woods, it says it has not a lot of search results, but I can guarantee you that a lot of people are searching for this search term. It is maybe not millions a day, but I know for sure that people will search for this. Let's search for something relevant for us. For example, how to get views on YouTube because it ranks these search term based on search volume. You can see here the search volume for how to get more views is high. How to get views is also high, but the rest is medium. And when we go down this list, you will see that eventually it ends with low. But I do think that this categorization is a little bit too coarse. Because when you have a small channel, then a search volume that is low here is maybe 10,000 views, which for a small channel can be a great topic to make a video about, if it is not too competitive. You can also save your searches just by clicking on this bookmark icon over here. And now it says here, search term saved. I will come back to saving search terms in a minute. Then on the right side over here, we have a three dot menu. And there are a couple of options in here. For example, go to Google Trends. And now this I find a super feature because beforehand we had to go manually to google.trends.google.com, type in the search query, select YouTube search, and now it goes directly to YouTube Trends. Let's go back to the three dotted menu. You can save or unsave an item. You can also remove a search result from this list, but I personally don't know why you would want to do that. Click on remove and it's gone. And you can also report a search result. And now let's take a look at the absolute killer feature of this tool, the content gap. Over here we can see the search term how to get unlimited views on YouTube. It marks this as a content gap which means that YouTube thinks that there are too little videos on this search term. In other words, YouTube tells us, please make a video about this topic. You can also filter on content gaps, click on all searches over here and then select content gaps only. And now it only gives us the content gaps. I noticed when you filter on content gaps only that the content gaps it gives here are not in the list with search result. Yes, this one is but these two weren't in the list we had previously when we selected all searches. You can also filter on country. In this case, you can filter on Australia, Canada, India, United Kingdom, and United States. And you can only filter for now on English. Then let's take a look at your viewers searches. This tab shows us the search terms that our audience that watched our videos also search for on YouTube. In this case, the search results make no sense. I don't know if that is because the tool is not completely developed yet or if this channel is simply too small. 
but I can imagine if this feature works that it gives us some insight on what our viewers think. So maybe there are search terms in here that we can use for a video idea. Let's take a look at the last tab over here and that is saved and there are all the saved searches. This overview and the searches across YouTube is exactly the same, only now it is filtered based on the searches we saved earlier. But the features over here in the context menu are exactly the same, except we don't have the remove search result function. I am glad that we have a tool to our disposal that is based on actual data because we already have so many keyword research tools that don't work. In this video, I explained why all keyword research tools are fundamentally broken. I can also help you with keyword research in my coaching program. The link to book a discovery call is in the description.